heavy IBM, this episode on the channel that is, as always, dedicated to IBMers, their caregivers, families, and friends, will discuss some important things that should be measured along your IBM journey. When I mention the term heavy IBM, I'm speaking about the mass of devices and their capacities that we must utilize as our skeletal muscle disease progresses. I'll be showing some actual measured weights of various devices that might be different than what is expected or its advertised weights and explain the necessary reasons for knowing some key weights and your correct weight too. Please hit that subscribe button and notification bell if you have not already done so when viewing previous IV myositis episodes. Let's start this discussion with one of the heavyweights, our power chair, and why a good one is always so heavy. When I received my Quantum Edge 3 in early April of 2020, there was a tag in the info pack stating the weight of my new chair was 435 pounds. One would think that was the weight of the complete finished product as received by me, the end user. But that was not the correct weight. And if you removed a few items, like I removed the elbow supports, a new weight should always be established. Why is knowing your power chair's correct weight important? When you get into the later stage of IBM and are relying on a power chair to avoid falls previously occurring with a cane, walker, or rollator, it may not be wise or possible to jump off your power chair to step on a scale at the doctor's office. And how accurate are those doctor office scales after being kicked around moved by cleaning crews, possibly dropped, and maybe never kept recalibrated. If you are lucky, your doctor's office has a roll-on scale that weighs both you and your power chair. But if you can't tell a nurse weighing you the correct weight of your power chair to be subtracted so your correct body weight can be determined, your weight on your doctor's appointment visit chart might also be wrong. And if a prescription or a treatment dose is based on your body weight, overdosing or underdosing could occur. Based on that alone, getting an accurate body weight and power chair weight is important. If you are still able to roll onto the clinic scale using your rollator, you better be able to tell the nurse how much to deduct for the rollator to determine your correct body weight. And since your doctor may use the popular Body Mass Index or BMI to make health recommendations for you, your correct weight becomes even more important. And you don't have to wait for your next doctor's office visit to establish what your body mass index is at. There are plenty of BMI calculators available on the internet and all you have to do is enter your height and weight to establish your body mass index. Remember a few minutes ago when I told you about the weight tag that came with my power chair? Yep, you guessed it. When I recently used that weight to subtract from the platform scale total during a recent clinic visit, my body weight was about 25 pounds more than what I weighed during my COVID visit in the hospital just five months ago. Hmm, I don't think that I'm that much heavier than what I weighed in early March. Time to figure this out. My prescription dosing, my BMI, and doctor's recommendations could be an error based on an incorrect weight. Since I have a couple of overhead hoists in my home, I purchased a hanging scale that I can use to measure anything I can lift on the hoist. Rather than buying one of those medical device scales costing $300 or more, I chose a well-recommended scale for only $26 that was reported to be very accurate and reliable. Upon receipt of this new scale, I weighed myself by getting lifted on the hoist over my bed. To my delight, I had not gained 25 pounds since I was sick with COVID, but only 5 pounds. Since then, I had the chance to get just my power chair weighed at my doctor's office, and it weighed only 1 pound less than what my new hanging home scale measured. Now I know my weight and the correct weight of my power chair, and I had my wife make a tag to put on the bottom side of my power chair's armrest for future reference. So what does my Quantum Edge power chair weigh? 
It scales out at 447.8 pounds. Now two additional questions. What makes it so heavy and what reasons beyond the doctor's office are important to know your power chair's weight? As an incline ramp is often used to get into your living space, it's only prudent to know what the ramp's safe weight rating is. This is especially important if you are having someone build a ramp for you. But there's more weight to consider. Let's say, as in my case, my power chair with me sitting in it weighs almost 650 pounds. Now consider the fact that somebody might be walking up the ramp just ahead of you or just behind you. That could be another 200 pounds or more added to the necessary capacity of the ramp. Add another person to the mix and you can see that that ramp may be required to support a thousand pounds or you're going to have to keep other people off the ramp until you are off. The pair of MK gel batteries in my quantum power chair weigh 104 pounds or a little over 23 percent of the chair's total weight. Your chair's seat cushion and backrest cushion add to the total weight also. The flat free tires, casters, and other ground engaging parts don't come along without their share of weight. The frame and suspension parts also contribute to the total weight. As the batteries are the heavy hitters here, let's hope that some long range lithium ion batteries will soon be developed at a reasonable cost for power chair applications. So what are some of the other IBM devices used in our daily lives? How about that infinite and variable position recliner lift chair sitting in your living room? All the extra positioning linkage and the necessary lift actuators will add up to an additional 30% weight increase compared to a standard recliner. And if you're tall like me, you might be placing that heavy infinite and variable position recliner lift chair upon a pedestal that might weigh an additional 25 to 30 pounds making that a 150 pound load. When placing my almost 200 pound butt on my recliner with my 447 pound power chair next to the recliner and my wife standing close to me serving me my lunch, I'm glad my home's floor construction can support the estimated 1,000 pounds in a relatively small floor area in my living room. If you live in an older home built over a basement, you might want to have a contractor check the floor structure underneath the area that you will be concentrating a lot of weight on. Have a jack post installed if necessary to support your IBM heavy devices. A good high-low bed is worth its weight in gold, but the weight is nothing to snore about. My queen-sized Transfer Master bed with the mattress and with the bedding weighs 455 pounds, but it's very sturdy and has withstood all the IBM plops I have given it over eight years now. Give some thought to the construction of the bed you are considering, which should also include whether it can withstand the rigors of the persistent IBM plops when you are in stage two or stage three of this horrible disease. Let's review what we've discussed so far in this video. We started out talking about knowing the correct weight of your mobility device when being scaled at your doctor's office. That led to a body mass index discussion and why your BMI is important for you and your doctor to correctly calculate. If you are experiencing any of these conditions and have a higher than recommended BMI, you know what has to be done. Material thickness and heaviness is the preferred method of devices designed for disabled people. As our IBM disease progresses, we will realize the need for stronger and somewhat heavier duty objects that we sit or lay on, but strive to find smaller and lighter objects for our hands and arms in handling our daily living activities. It is just as important to think about the environment that these heavy devices will be used in and remembering not to exceed the structural load limits on the floors or ramps they will be used on 
and also thinking about the weight or other household items sitting in the same vicinity that will add to the total weight. Don't forget the weight of our spouse or caregivers who may share a near space with us. I hope you enjoy the sharing of some of my IBM life experiences with you. If you do so, please consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't already done so, or at least press the thumbs up found on your viewing screen. As I like spending my time helping people with inclusion body myositis, please feel free to write a question in the comment section or send me an email to ibmyositis at gmail.com. I'll get scaling, my IBM friends.